Have you thought about stepping up to luxury for your next cruise vacation and can't decide which luxury cruise to choose? Then this video is for you. And as always, folks, if you enjoy this content, please like, subscribe, and turn on all notifications to get notified each time we post. My special guest today is Lola Vasliers, owner of Line Luxury Cruises Incorporated, operating two cruise holidays travel agencies located in Toronto and Oakville, Ontario. In addition to these two agencies, Lola has an expert team of travel advisors located in various parts of the country, and they meet the needs of their clients in every province since 1997. Hi, Lola. Welcome to RTE Travel Talk. Hi, Ken. Great to see you again. It's great to have you back with us, Lola. So, Lola, as you know, no two cruise lines are the same, and... Mm -hmm. Each one has a different vibe and the passengers found on board, they, they attract different audiences. Yep. And that especially applies to the more upscale luxury cruise lines. And since they're more of an investment, one wants to make sure that you find the right luxury cruise line that best suits your needs. I was hoping today that we could take a few minutes and you could go over a bit of a comparison between three of the probably more popular luxury luxury cruise lines and that'd be like region seven seas seaborne and silver sea yeah love to perfect perfect so where do we start well first of all i think uh needs to be said that luxury is different for everybody okay you know you could be somebody could sail on a royal caribbean ship a princess ship and for them that's luxury right then you have the Premium Plus, Oceana, Asamara, Viking. Then we get into the, what I call ultra luxury. Okay. And that is the three that we are talking about today. And the difference being what makes them ultra luxury? Because when you look at the hardware, the ships, they all have a lot of the same amenities. They have beautiful cabins, et cetera, et cetera. But it's the experience that you will get on an ultra luxury ship. That makes a difference. So there's okay. really three points that I can touch on. Ultra luxury is smaller, more intimate ships. They have a private club atmosphere, country club atmosphere. And one of the big selling features is they can get into some smaller ports that the big mega ships just cannot get into. So you have a whole different port experience. Right. Just due to their size. Due to their size. And the second is the guest to crew ratio and space on the ship. So it, let, let's flesh that out a little bit for our viewers mm -hmm. and listeners. What exactly is the guest to crew ratio um, and why is that important? Okay. When you have a large mega ship, right. you have thousands of passengers on board. Right. You can only hold so many crew members. So they are dealing with more people. And for them, it, it's much more difficult to find that level of exemplary service because they're on the go. They've got to turn things over fast. Right. Whereas on the ultra luxury, most of them have a one to one ratio, which oh, means wow. if you have a 600 passenger ship, you've got 600 crew members. So right there, you can tell they have the time. They're going to pay more attention to detail and finer things. So what that what that really means then is just as you said they're going to have the extra time to spend with you yep. to get to know you yep. and then probably that all contributes to providing that upscale experience and those special memories. Right. And they do get to know you very yep. quickly. They know for example we were on Seaborn recently and my husband preferred this one drink and by the second day when he sat down at lunch, that drink was waiting for him, <laughs> you know, and they, they knew our names. It right. was uncanny. I, I mean, I was blown away. That makes yeah. for a great experience. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah. It, it, it becomes so personal. And, and the third thing is the exclusivity. Basically, okay. they're adult only. They're more sophisticated and it, it's more of a subdued atmosphere. You know, it, it's not that it's boring. And it's not overwhelming. You don't feel like you're in with people that are, you know, mega rich and and snooty and that type of thing. Right. It's just a very subdued, comfortable 
very right. comfortable feeling. So by a subdued atmosphere, you're not going to probably, would, would I be correct in ask, surmising that you're not going to see the huge onboard parties and that kind of thing with some of these bigger ships that you would run into? No. And, and that's the thing with ultra luxury ships. Mm -hmm. A lot of it is the things that aren't on the ship. There's no photographer trying to take your picture every time you turn around and get off and on the ship. There's nobody nickel and diming you. Right. The only time you're going to use your onboard account is if you're going to go get your hair done, your nails done, have a massage, those type of things. Other than that, or you buy something in, in the, the gift shop, you right. don't take your card out for anything. So it's a much more relaxed atmosphere. Oh, yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So those are the three sort of pillars. I mean, certainly there are, are advantages to the, the larger ships, especially if you're taking a family cruise, because basically there is absolutely nothing for these for kids to do on these ships. So that's that's a good good notation for families then. Yes. You know, unless your children are a bit older and very well traveled and don't require all the bells and whistles and the the play areas and things like that. So in other words, they're liable to be bored stiff and as things they go with the, the kid, the kid, when the kids aren't happy, mom and dad aren't typically mm -hmm. are, are, aren't having a good time. No, Yeah. absolutely not. Absolutely. Interesting. So Lola, if looking at those three cruise lines that we looked at, Region 7 Seas, Silver Sea and Seabourn, there must be some similarities between them. What, what would they be? Okay, so basically, all three, there's no tipping. Gratuities, everything is all included. You have Wi-Fi included, and you have your drinks included. Okay. Each, each stateroom has a mini fridge, mm -hmm. which is stocked with your preference. If you're a beer drinker, they'll stock it with your favorite beer. If you're a, a whiskey drinker, they'll stock it with whiskey. Whatever your choice. All three of them do world cruises, which is a big thing. All of them as like every other ship, whether it's ultra luxury or not, they have various dining options. Of course, we touched on the dress code. All of them are basically country club casual. They do have, depending on the length of the cruise, maybe one or two informal nights. So basically the gentlemen wear a jacket. Don't have to wear a tie, but maybe a sports jacket. Women usually from, from there, they know what they can wear. Right. And then they do have a formal night. But that, okay. is, that is optional these days. So if you don't want to partake in the formal evening, you have other dining options. You can have in-room dining, and it's served course by course. So wow. If, yeah. So if you don't want to get dressed up. You don't have to. Have, have your dinner on your balcony watch the sunset, and it's served course by course. So basically, it's your cruise vacation, and you can style it the way you want. Yeah. There are still people that are true cruisers from the old days, like myself. <laughs> Me. <laughs> yes. Who, who still enjoy that one night of getting dressed up anyway, but not everybody is there. You know, it's something that we don't do very much anymore, so no. I, I kind of miss it just now and again to get, get on the fancy duds and... and feel Absolutely. like J James Bond and Monte Carlo or stuff like that. Absolutely. And I, you know, I love seeing gentlemen in their tuxedos. Yeah. It, you know, it just adds such a, a flair to the whole evening. Exactly. It. Exactly. Yeah. It's a lot of fun as far as I'm concerned. Want to throw in something here. Sure. With George and I being on Seabourn recently, we took that cruise. It's the first time I've been on Seabourn. We okay. sold quite a bit of it, but it's the first time I've actually been on Seabourn. It was our 50th wedding anniversary, so we decided we would do a Seaborn cruise. They went so far out of their way to celebrate our anniversary. <laughs> Honestly, Ken, it was the, the, the night of our anniversary. We decided we didn't. We were tired. We didn't want to get dressed up. We just right wanted to casual and quiet. We went up to the, the grill near the pool. Right. And, and uh, at night they serve a nice dinner. So we had dinner up there and watched the sunset. After dinner, they came over and the chef had made this cake for us. It could serve 20 people. I don't know why he made it so big. <laughs> and so we had a couple of slices of cake. And I said to the, 
the, the staff that was serving us, I said, listen, guys, just take it back and, and share it with your colleagues. You know, right. we can't possibly eat this. Went back to our stateroom and on the bed was the towel swans with a bottle of champagne and a couple of glasses and rose petals all around it. Yeah. And, and, and the note from the captain and uh, the crew wishing us a happy anniversary. It was your anniversary. So they obviously knew, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, you, and they you, spread the uh, sorry. They spread the word because yeah. when we went into every spot we went into, even the cruise director, I yeah. noticed him sitting at the other end of the pool. He looked like he was having a drink, getting ready yeah. to go and do his show. But at a certain point, when they brought the cake, he obviously had been told we were up there. Yeah, he came over to wish us a happy anniversary. <laughs> It didn't even stop there. The following night, we get back to the stateroom. And again, there's the two swans on the bed, all the rose petals. And I said to George, I said, oh, my goodness, what am I going to do? I can't go to sleep in the bed. I can't. <laughs> they were so gorgeous. And but you know, Lola. Yeah, the service you know, level is, is unbelievable. And yeah. just one other thing. Yeah. There was a dessert at lunch one day that I really enjoyed. And I mentioned it to our server. Right. And I said, you know, I really love this. I would love to get the recipe. Not only did they provide the recipe, when we got back to our stateroom one evening, there was a knock on our door and they said, room service. I said, I didn't order room service. I said, you got the wrong cabin. And he said, no, no, this is the right room. He says, it's special room service. The chef made two of these tarts for us because <laughs> I liked them so much. That's the level that they will go to to keep right their on. passengers happy. And, you know, on another line, just recently, mm -hmm. uh, Deb yep. and I had the exact same experience. And it was about, it was, in this case, it was all about my birthday. And they did, I didn't ask for that. I didn't tell them going into it. They just knew, obviously, from our data. Right. And, you know, you, you, and you, at, at, at some level, you think to hear about it, you think, well, that's kind of hokey, but it's meaningful. It is. It very, really is meaningful. And it really adds to your vacation. And I know on the other cruise lines, they do something. Yeah. They will bring you a cake to your table at dinner yeah. one, one evening. But I mean, they just went over yeah. the top on this. It, it was unbelievable. Oh, wonderful. I mean, as far as dining goes. You have the same options as on every cruise line. Okay. You have your specialty restaurants, which are French, Italian, a steakhouse, a seafood, Asian. They have right. the same. What puts them a little over top is what I mentioned before, the in-room dining course by course. You wow. won't get that on the mass market. No. And the premium lines. And, and also, we found that if you ask for something, that is typically not on the menu. They usually will honor that and, and prepare it for you. I've seen that more than once. Pretty well on these cruise lines, no is not an answer. Very rarely have run into that. If they can do it, they will make it happen. And all of them do have a world-renowned executive chef, like on Seaborn, it was Thomas right. Keller. They all have an executive chef which oversees their menus. Wonderful. So, Lola, when most people think about luxury, you, people automatically think, oh, well, that's an old fogies cruise. What is the typical demographic that's found on board nowadays? And, do, and does it actually vary by, by the particular luxury line? So, basically, the cruise lines like to say their average age is 55 to 60. Mm-hmm. I'm going to switch it more 65 and a, maybe a little higher. Typically, the older the guest is, they have traveled more. And we find, and I'm the same, the more I have cruised, the more I want a smaller ship. The other thing is they have the means to do it. They're usually empty nesters. Right. Married. Right. Right have had they're well educated they have a zest for travel and they love exploring new destinations new adventures so it's not so much about age i like to say age is just a number and mine's unlisted <laughs> um, so so it's it, and and they typically stay in luxury hotels 
and they're used to the finer things in life. So that is what the demographics is. It's not about the numbers. You could have somebody who is 40 years old or 45 years old, but is very successful in what they're doing and they have the means to travel this way and they will. Right. It's the mindset right. of these people. When we look at that, brings up another point that what I love about this type of travel, and that is a lot of these folks, as you say, are well-traveled. They have the means. But what we found in that, by and large, they're wonderful company and great, great people to travel with because you're exchanging travel stories and where you've been, who you met, and that kind of thing. It, they make, it makes for a great, great camaraderie on board, I would think. It does. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that was, that's part of what makes it feel so comfortable. Right. You're not, you don't feel intimidated to sit down and start talking to these people. And, you know, I love hearing their stories. <laughs> so Lola, if I was interested in one of these particular cruise lines and I was looking to compare kind of numbers, what would we be looking at as, as kind of a cost comparison between those three particular luxury cruise lines? Okay. Well, what I did was I've taken a typical 10-day Mediterranean cruise. Okay. Barcelona to Rome. Yep. I took a July 2023, just so I could do a comparison apples to apples. And I priced a lead-in balcony suite. I also, because Regent Seven Seas includes a short excursion in each port in their pricing, I took the other two cruise lines, Silver Sea and Seaborn. I took that itinerary and I went in and checked on the um, short excursions. Right on. So to level them up. Yes. So Perfect. basically, when you're on Regent, you're going to get, when you're in the port, the um, typical complimentary short excursion is an overview of the port you're in. So I did the same on each of the other two. Okay. So when I do the pricing and compare it, it's really apples to apples. So it's very interesting. A suite, a balcony suite on Regent for that 10-day Mediterranean cruise would come in at $17,840 for the okay. two passengers. For, for two people? For two people. Okay. Silver Sea comes in at 24440 So there's a difference there. Quite a bit. Yes. But what I found interesting was that Seaborn came in at 18600 So not that much difference. Not that much difference. But a big difference in the ships because Seaborn is much smaller than Regent is. However, Regent has the larger cabins. The next thing I did was I took some people think that you could take a cruise line like Celebrity, Norwegian, MSC, that have an area on their ship, which they call a ship within a ship. NCL has the Haven, Celebrity has the Retreat. So I priced out a lead-in on Celebrity retreat and included shore excursions it came in at 16,185 which is a thousand and change lower than region interesting and almost the same well two thousand dollars more 2500 uh, less than seaborn however when you are in the retreat or the haven it's fabulous when you're in that environment right as soon as you leave that environment you're in the masses. Exactly. It is not the same experience. So if you are going to spend 16000 I would rather see you spend an extra $100, $200 a day and get up into one of the ultra luxury. So you have the experience throughout the whole trip, not just when you're in a certain area. That's really, really, really interesting. Now, to push back just a little bit on that, mm -hmm. would it be a consideration for you, if you're advising guests, like, for example, somebody's doing a multi-generational and granddad and grandma are, are going and they have the means to to go up to Regent or Silver Sea or Seaborn, yes. but there's actually a couple more families that want to come and they, they want to bring the kids and there's a few more activities. Would it then make sense to yes. consider the retreat or the haven? That it would. You have to be careful, though, because unless they have changed it, and I am not aware of it. If you're on NCL in the Haven, you cannot bring people into the Haven. It is strictly for the passengers that are in those suites. Right. So if you have family members 
you can't bring them up to the okay. pool, the lounge, anything else. You right. have so to, you, you can go down, but you, you can go down. They yeah. cannot visit you. However, yeah, that makes in, sense. Yeah. In celebrity on celebrity retreat, you can bring them up for dinner, but you they're not there. They cannot use the private pool, the right. private lounge and things like that. And, and quite honestly, when I spoke to one of the reps from uh, Norwegian Cruise Line and I, I said, what is the Haven really about? Okay. They were, they were trying to promote it as an option to bring people that do a seaborne silver sea regent into their ship and, and sail in the retreat or the Haven. That's not what was happening. The reality was it was families. Families who have the means were booking the Haven. Basically, they're not attracting no. the Silver Sea region or Seaborn client. No. no. That's, that's no. fascinating. Yeah, because like I said, once you leave that environment, yeah. I mean, I sailed on in the Haven. Yeah. And I'll tell you, when I left, I could not wait to get back into the, the Haven itself. Because you're out there with everybody else, you know, right. in the crowd, you're jostling, you're lining up, uh, waiting for elevators. Right. You know? So again, so circling back to our cost comparison, then if you're looking for a more relaxed atmosphere, I'd pay $1,600 in a heartbeat to have to have that extra relaxed atmosphere and not have to jostle and not go yeah. through all that other stuff. So it really comes down to it what yeah. you're looking for. And, and I would expect Lola, you, you know, all of your advisors are well-trained and have the experience to elicit the proper yes. information from, from your potential guests to get them on board the right ship. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, we specialize in cruises. That's, that's yeah. what we do. And, and part of a big part of it is uh, the qualifying. We spend right. a lot of time with you trying to figure out exactly what would fit you the yeah. best. Because it's a big investment. It's it an, is. It's an investment, and it's also an investment of your time and your your enjoyment. It so is. you want to get it right, and that's Absolutely. where that's where you guys come in. Being in the cruise only business, our passengers, we really take to heart the feedback we hear that we get. We always follow up. So Lola, you mentioned earlier that regions region ships were larger. Tell us a little bit about the difference in size between. The, the three ships, what are we looking at? Seaborn, Silver Sea, Region 7 Seas? I will. Excuse okay. me if I'm looking down because I don't remember all these <laughs> numbers, but I have them here. Okay. We'll, we'll forgive you. <laughs> Thank you. So Region, as I said, is the larger of the three. Right. But we're not talking megaton ships. So their ships tend to range from about 28,000 gross tons right. to just over 55,000. They will carry anywhere from 490 to 750 passengers. Okay. And their staterooms will range from 300 square feet to over 2,100 square feet when you get up into the highest end. Even the lead-in stateroom is a good size. It is. Yeah. When you're talking most lead-in cabins on a, uh, re a Royal Caribbean, you're talking like maybe 170 square feet. Exactly. So almost double. Yeah. Yeah. So then we get to Silver Sea. Now they have older ships and they have newer ships. Okay. So there's quite a, a, a different range, a wide range. Their older ships start at about 17,400 right. as opposed to regions 28,000. And then you will get the new ships and they will go up to almost 55,000, which is in line with regent. Right. However, they will hold from 388 passengers to 600 passengers. So you can see right away, same size ships, and there's more space. Their older ships, the state rooms, because the ships are smaller, range from 240 square feet to 827 square feet. Still a good size. Still mm -hmm. a good size, larger yeah. than the rest. The newer ships, they're from 334 square feet to about 1,400 square feet. Then we get into Seaborn. Seaborn, their ships are pretty much the same size. 32,000 gross tons to 40,350. You know, they're, they're pretty consistent. They hold 458 to 600 passengers. So okay. in general, 
fewer passengers on Seaborn. Their suites start at 295 square feet up to 1536 square feet. Decent size day rooms. However, as I said, the region state rooms and suites are larger. Interesting. Interesting. So because there's more space. Yeah, so larger ship, they got more room to offer that. And then, well, two out of the three do expedition sailings. So that would be Silver Sea and Seaborn. And Seaborn. Region does not do expedition. And the Silver Sea, you can get as few as 100 passengers, up to 274 passengers. And Seaborn holds 264 passengers. Right. And expedition cruising is a whole different kettle of fish. Yes. It's just as luxurious, have all the same amenities and things yeah. that you have on the regular Silver Sea and Seaborn. Yeah. But those ships are purposely built. They have to have the, the hulls that can go through the ice, et cetera. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, right. They're doing Antarctica and Arctic cruises, and some I think actually they may do some South America, Galapagos, yeah. that sort of thing. Absolutely. Interesting. So yeah. I know there's one question that's I'm bound to get since we talked about ship size mm -hmm. from our viewers and listeners is how would these ships compare in rough seas to some of the big cruises? Like, you know, are you going to find more more motion on board these ships? Interestingly. Just because the ships are smaller right. doesn't mean they sail as well in the rough seas. It, it's how the ship is built. I was on a princess ship um, of the only time that I ever got seasick. Oh, really? And yeah, it was the location of the stateroom. And it was the way the ship was built that it just did not ride the seas that well. <laughs> and yet on the same sailing there was a silver sea ship right and passengers on it and they were fine interesting so we interesting. had more motion on the princess ship than they did interesting you really can't draw that conclusion the smaller ship is just by and large going to be rougher it may not necessarily be it comes down to how the ship that's is built right. that's right yeah and and of course the lower you are on the ship and the more midship the less motion you will feel right it's always that way. So Lola, so Lola, tell me, you've been on board all three. Based on what we've, we've heard today, you enjoyed all three. Yes. Now, having said that, tell me, what was your favorite feature <laughs> of all of them across the three lines? The favorite feature? Yeah. You, you're not going to believe this, but the fact that they had these lazy boy loungers <laughs> on board Seaboard. Right on. <laughs> And I was dealing with a shin splint and swollen ankles. The fact that I could come back, put my feet up, and relax was just, for me, it was priceless. I just loved it. <laughs> um, you know, all three are fabulous cruise lines. Right. They really are. And they all have their, their features that are superb and, and memorable. But right. you know what? It's funny. It's the little things that happen that you remember the most. And it, to me, that is, that was it. Exactly. Who'd have, who'd have thunk a Barca lounger on, on board a ship? Absolutely. <laughs> but, you know, just one of those things. Yeah. Well, Lola, yeah. this has been absolutely, absolutely great information. Thanks for being with us today. Any final thoughts before we wrap up? Well, it's my pleasure being with you, Ken, always. Um, say, you know what? I would say if if someone is booking Oceana, Azamara, celebrity even, and they're in like the the retreat or they're in the higher end right. suites, consider moving up a little bit. Consider taking that leap, get into the ultra luxury. And I can pretty well guarantee you, unless you're traveling with your family and small children, you won't go back. Sounds like great advice to me. So, Lola, you have a great team of travel advisors with you in both Oakville, Ontario, and Toronto, Ontario. What's the best way if folks wanted to reach out to one of you about a ultra-luxury cruise? How would we do that? Well, if you want to call the uh, or contact the o Oakville office, okay. the phone number is 905-337-2228. Okay. Or you can use our uh, toll-free number, one 888 444-2228. Our Toronto office is at 
486-4646. You can email info at Cruise Holidays Oakville, or you can email info at lawrenceparkcruises.com, or you can go to our website. Uh, Actually, one website, which uh, we'll cover both, is www.hookedoncruising.com, and you can get our information there. You can see our agents, you can see some of their specialties, and um, we'd love to hear from you. Perfect. Perfect. Well, Lola, this has been fantastic. Thanks for being with us today. Where are you and George off to next? Believe it or not, we have no plans. Oh, wow. <laughs> I know. <laughs> People think we're constantly traveling, but uh, right now we have no plans. Well, but gonna... ask me next week and that could change. All right. Uh, that That's a date. I will get hold of you next week to see where, where you guys are <laughs> off to because I always like to know. So, and with that, Lola, I'm just going to wish you and George Safe and happy cruising. May the wind always be out your back. And I hope to see you and George on a Lido deck real soon. Thank you, Ken. Always a pleasure. Take care. Bye-bye. And that about wraps things up for today, folks. A very special thanks to my guest, Lola Vasliers of Cruise Holidays Oakville and Lawrence Park. If you'd like to reach Lola or one of her team, I will leave their contact information in the description. If you would like to reach us, Simply send a question to questions at realtravelexperts.com, visit our website, realtravelexperts.com, or simply leave a comment. We always respond. And as always, folks, if you enjoyed this content, a like, subscribe, and a ring of the bell is certainly appreciated and helps us to spread the word. So until next time, happy travels!